Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us on this stream presented by Alpha News. I'm your host, Kyle Hooten, and tonight we're joined by a very interesting panel of guests, Jake Dusenberg of Action for Liberty, Samantha Schwartz, a nurse, and State Representative Eric Mortensen to discuss the new Biden vaccine mandate. As I'm sure you are all aware, uh, it seems like President Biden put millions and millions of workers in an impossible situation where they have to choose between getting a vaccine they may not want or lose their jobs, as all employers with over 100 employees will now be required to require the vaccine or else face astronomical penalties from the federal government. However, in light of this hopeless situation, it seems that Duesenberg, Mortensen, and Schwartz have something of a solution, and they're joining us now to tell us about that. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Kyle. So right off the bat, uh, Duesenberg, tell us about what you're working on, what you think the solution is, and what steps we need to take now uh, to oppose this mandate. Well, I mean, I think we just saw the communist takeover of, Minnesota, or of the United States of America and, of course, Minnesota, where we're living here. I just can't believe we have a guy, a president, that thinks he has authority to tell private businesses what they can and can't do and use the Department of Labor, which is such an extreme measure to implement this executive uh, fiat so there's just no, I don't think there's a lot of hope out in Washington, D.C. I haven't had a lot of hope out in D.C. for a long time. Um, so what we do is we, we fight things at the federal level, at the state level. And what I mean by that is if, if the federal government or the president of the United States is doing something unconstitutional, we as a state can make that null and void in the state. It's uh, principles of nullification goes back to 1798. So Eric Mortensen actually has a bill, which is actually an amendment form, because there's an upcoming special session. It, it's supposed to be the end of September, it might be October, where the legislature comes back and they're all supposed to get together and vote on this $250 million uh, bill that basically is a, a payment to frontline workers. And what our organization has done is we said, don't don't vote for that. Every legislator refused to vote for that unless it has a stop vaccine mandate amendment attached to it, which Representative Mortensen has already written. You can go to his website, uh, moreforhouse.com, and read what it is. I think it's up on the top. And it does three things. First of all, it says that the governor or the state can't mandate vaccinations at, as a place of employment. Number two, it says we can't have vaccine passports, which turns sec turns like us into second class citizens. And then number three, and probably the most important thing after last night's crazy communist takeover of the United States is that it says the federal government, especially the president cannot mandate vaccination amongst the different states. Well, actually I should say amongst the different states, amongst Minnesota. Um, mm -hmm. And I would like to see the, this piece of legislation in every state, but what we're doing is we're fighting here in Minnesota. Awesome. Uh, Representative Mortensen, you have an outstanding relationship among uh, Minnesota conservatives for pushing this sort of legislation. Uh, we just heard about this amendment that you've drafted. Is there support from your fellow Republicans for this measure? Well, I think so. In the grassroots level, there's a ton of support and sure. hopefully you guys can see me okay. I'm halfway to my bug out location here, but I am hopeful <laughs> open for those watching. Um, I think there's a lot of support for certainly the idea. There has not been a lot of Republican legislators to sign the pledge indicating that they uh, would support it. Um, but we're trying to lead by example here because it's, and I'm, I'm, I wish we wouldn't have been right about this when we wrote this amendment about a month ago. And what I mean by that is we thought, well, what if Biden decides to do something at the national level? We should incorporate this type of a language to nullify those executive orders. And last night, of course, we were proven right that he did that um so he had some foresight but again i wish position for so many people right now that it's a third of the country mm -hmm. how does this measure compare to what we've seen in florida with DeSantis? because i know that he's taken similar steps to nullify federal mandates at the state level yeah he's certainly been he's been using action i think this is a little different because it recognizes mm -hmm. that we're trying to it's, it's sort of like a sanctuary state what you see happening in california or a sanctuary city where it prevents uh, Minnesota law enforcement from enforcing these unconstitutional executive orders at the uh, the national level or the federal level. And I think like a lot of other people today, we were sick to our stomach for what, 18 months when Governor Walls was, you know, at the governor level dictating how we all behave for 6 million Minnesotans. But now for, for President Biden to have the audacity 
to take this up to the federal government level and and for and rule really one man rule again over the entire country it's just completely unconstitutional and i heard today um how just last year nancy pelosi was saying oh we don't have the authority to do this at the federal government level well what's changed nancy what's changed joe because joe biden last year said the same thing so they know this is unconstitutional but they just don't care that's the biggest problem we have is nobody cares about their oath of office anymore all they care about is their agenda and i want to add to that so like because we, we we have the pledge that we're running the action for liberty.com and it's very fascinating to see these republicans run away and and um we've been working with samantha and her group rally for v choice a large facebook group what are you like fifty thousand people now it's massive they help with these rallies and they're just ignoring us they're running away from us uh, on this issue they have no they have zero plan on what to do um we saw we saw both uh, Gazelka and uh, Michelle Benson, who are running for governor, literally just tweet one statement about it. And they haven't had any plan. The Senate Republicans came out with just saying that this is bad. Oh, I just got an email saying ben- from an email from Benson. I'm on their list, apparently. So well, I'll have to read that later. Then. <laughs> but they don't have a plan. We've had a plan. Even Scott Jensen, it's funny he mentioned Sanctuary State for um, Health Freedom. He comes out saying that he's going to write a bill. I'm like, write a bill. Mortensen wrote this a month ago. He had help from Samantha and her crew of nurses. You guys, get on board with this or tell us a different plan that's better. But no plan is no action at all. And, I mean, it's very simple here. The one shot we have at solving this issue, I don't see any other avenue here, is you got to hold up this special session. Don't let this bill pass $250 million. You have to attach it to that bill. And if I can say one other thing is, Republicans, Republican politicians, from what we've seen, their talking points back, they'll say, well, th- well ne- this will never pass in Minnesota because of the Democrats. You know, it's not going to pass in Minnesota because of Republicans right now. What we need as an organization, Action for Liberty, we have over 100,000 people out through Minnesota. You can tell the passion I have on this issue. All we need is every Republican on board. OK, so let's unify, guys. Unify behind this single issue. And once I got all Republicans on board, then I pick off the five Democrats in the House we need, and we put the pressure on Governor Walls. But if I don't have Republicans on board, and they literally aren't bo- on board right now, then we're gonna we're gonna fail. And that's why this is so important. And Republicans are just massively failing. I, I don't. When think I got to add to that, if I can, sorry, that I, we gotta let Samantha talk in here. But if this is not a, a partisan issue, I mean, I've seen people right. forwarding me emails from a, a Democrat, Zach Stevenson, Representative yep. Stevenson. But in an email to his constituents, he does not support mandated vaccinations. So this is not a partisan issue. The Republicans that are saying it'll never happen because of the Democrats, that's not true at all. It's just they're too lazy. They're too cowardly to take the action required. It's really disturbing this massive gap we have between what the people actually want and what these fake conservatives are willing to push. And I feel like nobody here understands this better than Samantha. Uh, As Jake mentioned a minute ago, you run this uh, Facebook group with like 50,000 members. Uh, You were present at uh, uh, an event that we live streamed a couple weeks ago now where nurses came together and shared their concerns about vaccine mandates. I mean, you're on the ground interacting with, you know, the grassroots people. What's this experience been like witnessing that disconnect between what so many people desire and what representatives are willing to do? You know, it's extremely frustrating. (laughs) And, you know, we a lot of us actually even we saw this coming, you know, over a year ago, we saw the end goal, you know, was that we were going to be forced into compliance, they were going to start to create second class citizens. Um, And we said that, you know, over a year ago, and people didn't believe us. Um, You know, the, the anti medical mandate movement has been alive and well for quite a few years, actually, already in Minnesota, and now it's finally coming to a head. Um, And so, you know, we created this group, just to have a simple rally, you know, in our, in our hometown. And it just blew up, you know, within 24 hours, we had over 10,000 members. And and now we're at like, I believe it's exactly like 47,000. And that's even with Facebook kicking people out and having to rejoin. Um, So yeah, we've, we've, you know, felt the censorship firsthand with things. And so it's just, it's incredibly frustrating because, you know, from a lay person, somebody who isn't real well-versed in legislation and government, um, 
you know, to have people that we think are on our side and are telling us that they're on our side and they're saying we we're of course for medical freedom. We're of course against this mandate. This is horrible what is happening to you guys, but then they're not doing anything about it. That's why we linked arms with action for Liberty because they had a plan and, and they had, it's like the only plan that is going to work right now. It needs to happen now. We can't wait till we get new people elected and then everything takes into effect 2023. We need it now. Yeah, yeah. With the notable exception of, of Representative Mortensen, have you been able to have meaningful contacts with people in St. Paul? You know, um, not not related to this argument right now, you know, not related to this. We've had a lot of people who who have responded and said that they'll support us to the end. And it, again, it's lots and lots of talk, but there is there's a lot of diversion, a lot of like, you know, Jake had mentioned of excuses about why they can't do this or that, um, but they're still in our corner. And so that's the thing, though, is that we're we're done, you know, with this. We can't, as nurses, you know, back when we didn't have any PPE, um, all of these organizations, the ANA and the CDC and all this stuff, they were not behind the nurses and they were not protecting us, um, but they were sitting here acting like they were. And that's kind of how it feels right now with politicians. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense if you pay attention to Minnesota politics at all. You know that there's lots of people on Twitter. There's lots of people holding little events and rallies and showing up to parades. But where are the results? We simply don't see results. Um, my next question is about our deadline. So you guys mentioned that this, this amendment is going to be attached to a bill that has funding associated with it. When is this expected to come up for a vote? And when are we going to know if this measure succeeds? They, they yeah, well, yeah, but I guess you would know better. So, me. <laughs> that's a great question, Kyle. I've been trying to get an answer to that. The only answer I'm getting is the last Friday in September or the first Friday in October. That, that's what I've been hearing repeatedly for about three weeks. But now what we're seeing is the governor starting to hint that uh, with this pressure coming in on this issue and supposedly these tough talking Republicans in the Senate are entertaining firing Jan Malcolm finally. I don't believe them for a second, but um, they're starting to, Wallace is starting to waffle as to whether or not he's going to go forward with this special session. So we have to demand that he goes forward with this special session. So we have the opportunity, this window to advance this amendment on this legislation. Um, so again, the last Friday in September, maybe the first Friday in October. Okay, so should the special session not occur or should the vote not you know, have a favorable outcome, then what happens? Is, is that a dead end or do we still have options? Well, it's kind of a dead end in the sense that we have to have the legislature come back. But see, yeah. this is the thing is if Republicans are on board and unite, then the, the, the target then becomes putting the pressure on walls. But why on earth would Action for Liberty spend our precious resources, donor money, going after Democrats when we don't have Republicans on board? Kyle, I just... When Mort was talking, I was reading through Michelle Benson's email. Okay, so she's running for governor. She's a state senator. All you see as an action item is donate to my campaign. Yeah. Because when she's governor, she'll stand up against federal encroachment. What are you doing right now, Michelle? You're a state senator. You're not. See, this is the thing I love about Alpha News because, like, unlike any other media in Minnesota, probably heck the country, you guys at least are willing to hear the story because, you know, obviously what Mort and I are saying, and as Samantha's joined us and sees this firsthand, no one talks like this. You know, you're supposed to play, yay, red team, we're all on the same side, but we're sick of the talk. You guys are bullshit. You're, you're not doing anything. This is literally proof. She's a state senator. She, she's not only a state senator. She's the she's the ranking member of the the uh, uh, health health and human services committee it's like she's the one that basically she's like the top dog on health policy in the senate republican majority and she has no solution she waits till friday afternoon to try to raise money for a gubernatorial campaign it's ridiculous it is it is because she recognizes that people want accountability they want state level control and then she tries to cash in and get some dollars out of it instead of doing anything meaningful i mean she, she could be on this call right she now. could be signing on to your pledge yeah she can sign on right now she can do something these guys are all talk and that's why we're just not going to muzzle ourselves they hate mortensen because he actually tells people what's going on up there what, what are we gonna we're gonna pretend like we're gonna solve this in the 2022 election guys really that's when we're gonna yeah. solve it not that I don't want to get rid of walls. I think everyone knows I want to get rid of walls. But we don't have time to wait for 2022. This well, has to be solved now. 2023. So, you That's know. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, that'll be too late for workers who are going to be subjected to this mandate. And what's the effective date? Uh, excuse me for not knowing, but when does the federal Biden mandate go into effect? 
I didn't even hear that. I, I'm not sure. I, I, I haven't seen any specific number, but I guarantee you, you know, 2022 is too late. Uh, it'll be yeah. before then. Definitely too late. They're doing it right and now. And it's too late for uh, employers that are already passing mandates. You know, there's already yeah. employers that are mandating October 1st, November 1st, December 1st. I mean, this fall, it's it's going to be a collapse of the healthcare system. Mm -hmm. You can speak to that just a little bit, how these mandates will actually impact the healthcare system. Because from what I've heard when I watch CNN, it's going to totally empty the ICUs and it'll be rainbows and ponies. Right. It'll be super great because they're not talking about, they keep talking about beds, beds, beds. Nobody's talking about the staffing shortage. The reason yeah. we don't have beds is because we don't have staff. You know, um, I stepped away from the bedside last October. So, you know, I want to make sure that that's clear that I'm not in the front lines right now. But because I stepped away, I get my inbox flooded with people who want to speak up and who want to stand up, but are too worried about being bullied, about being retaliated against for speaking up and for standing up and are terrified right now. And so there's a lot of nurses who have seen this front hand and I'm getting stories upon stories of all of the staffing shortages. Um, discrimination against patients, patients coming in that are unvaccinated, and that the staff are talking about them outside, you know, the doctors are laughing about it, they're asking for treatments that have been proven in the literature to do something, and they're laughing about their family calling in to advocate for them. Um, it's, it's ridiculous. And so what's going to happen with these mandates is these people are going to leave. Um, and people aren't just leaving because they're being forced to do a medical procedure that they don't believe in, um, for whichever reason they choose, because that's their body. Um, they're also going to be leaving because of the culture of healthcare right now. People are just against each other. Um, there's bullying amongst staff. It's, it's really, really, really sad what is happening. And I honestly feel like if you are a healthcare provider and you have taken an oath to provide informed consent and to do no harm and to uphold patient and parental rights, that every single one of you should be pissed right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we see what's happening in the White House and that's very disturbing, but a lot of people gloss over the fact that there's equally disturbing trends at every level of the country. I mean, it's divided and fractured in the hospital, in the state legislature, in the White House. I mean, all the government agencies, there's really a lot of depth to this problem. Um, well, Duesenberg, can I, you, oh, yeah, can sure, I add sure. to that, Kyle? So for years, we've heard the liberals say that healthcare is a fundamental human right. Yeah. And if they really believe that, they're about to reduce, it, in, some, in some cases, maybe remove access from quality health care. Because if the healthcare professionals lose their jobs and they leave the industry, whether it's willingly or they're terminated, there's going to be a hell of a lot harder time getting access to that care. So if they really believe it's a fundamental human right, they're about to take that right away from millions of people. And where, are they going, and where are they going with this? Then are they going to force those people to get the vaccine and stay on the job they don't want to do? Right. That's the thing. Like, what dangerous road are we going down here? There's people who, who aren't even wanting to even apply for an exemption now that they just want to leave because it's so bad. And, you know, me as a nurse, like this is not what I signed up for. I didn't sign up to judge people. And, you know, if I have if I have somebody come in who smokes two packs a day and they're coming in for the third time this month because they're in respiratory distress from COPD and we have to intubate them and spend all these resources on it. It's not my point to judge them. It is my job as a healthcare professional to take care of them like they would be my family or my friends. And 95% of what walks through the doors in hospitals is out of personal choice. So where do we draw the line? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a really scary point. Uh, if people want to fight back against this and they're concerned by these issues as we are, uh, Jake, you mentioned that there's a pledge on your website that they can sign. Tell us about that. Yeah, so go to actionforliberty.com. If you're not on our email, sign up on our email. You can do that very simply by signing our petition to stop vaccine passports. We've offered to pay the cost of uh, printing for all the other petitions that are out there. There's a lot of different groups that want to unify on this. Quite frankly, a lot of people are unifying on this issue except for the politicians. And as Mort said, there are actually Democrats. We're tracking a couple of Democrats are in support. But from my standpoint, as a large grassroots organization, I can't go spend money targeting Democrats when our base, the Republicans, aren't even on board. It makes no sense. Do you know how much money it's going to cost us to try to get walls on our side? Well, why would I do that if if uh, Ron Cresha in Little Falls isn't on our side or Tammy Tice isn't on our side or Mary Franson's not on our side? Why would I spend resources? Michelle Benson, Paul Gazelka, new Senate Majority Leader Jeremy Miller, they need to be on our side first. Mm -hmm. then we'll go there. And the best way to know that we're on, they're on our side is either they sign the pledge. It's the easiest thing to do. So at actionforlabor.com, they sign the pledge 
or they make a public statement pledging that they're going to do this. Okay, so if if they if they got a hold up about signing a pledge, it's on actionforliberty.com. All right, fine. But you got to make a public statement. We have to know you're on our side before we can start targeting those other people. So here's the thing: is people. People are really irate about. It. We just got back from the state fair. The energy was unbelievable. There's a there's a huge energy amongst the base and actually new people too. It's not just the base P- people that have been lifelong Democrats or you know turned into people like us. So they're new to politics. They don't realize this. The power still res- resides in the people. Okay, so you need to contact your legislator if you just Google. Who represents me, Minnesota? You can find your legislator. Otherwise, we put this inf- information out. You can go to actionforliberty.com and on our news section, you see stop the how to stop Biden. And then we actually have a link to that. You contact your legislator and you tell them, do not support the $250 million unless it has Eric Mortensen's stop vaccine mandate amendment with it. Mm-hmm. Request they sign the pledge so that you know publicly that they're on board. Then what we could do is we whip the votes to make this thing happen. And if it comes to the point where Walls is like, well, I'm not going to call a special session, he's going to have tens of thousands of people at the door of the mansion. It's going to be very painful for Tim Walls. But we can't get to that point until Republicans are at least on board. I, this is so obvious. It's no. so obvious. I don't know why we get pushback from these legislators. Maybe yeah. they just don't actually believe in this. I, I got a question for you, Jake. Yeah. Uh, I'm up in Senator uh, Rarick's district right now. And on the way up here, I, I got a call from somebody who said that uh, Rarick might be willing to sign the pledge, but he doesn't like that the Action for Liberty logo is on the bottom. Would you, uh, if they took the Action for Liberty logo off and signed it, would anybody care? Take it off. I do not right, care. That's what I said. Take the damn thing off. Who cares? Just sign the damn thing. That's right. Sign the thing. I mean, like, I literally, if you don't sign the pledge, come out with a public statement of that. So, but there's just no other option here, guys. I mean, what, what do you, we just saw the communists take over the United States. Like, what are you, what are you waiting for here? Yeah. I mean, I really don't think people understand the gravity of what happened. It, it, it's totally unconstitutional. What Mortensen said earlier about uh, Pelosi's quote, I pulled up the quote. It's on my Twitter timeline. Pelosi literally said April 29th, 2021. Here's the thing. We cannot require someone to be vaccinated. That's just not what we can do. Uh, even the White House press secretary said yesterday, quote, there are limitations. We can't declare with a magic wand from the federal government that every person has to be vaccinated. Yet, as they're saying that with the left hand, they're striking us with the right hand. I mean, the gravity of this is impossible to overstate. And like you said, Jake, uh, why are we trying to climb Everest and get walls on our side when we can't even walk up the local hill and get some Republicans on our side? It's completely- no, I'm, I'm going to read a text. I just, re- I just received a text, okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Kyle, just right on this point. And it's a state center. I'm not going to mention the person's name, okay? Sure. But the person says it's it's done. Like, th- this is not going to work. The governor will never sign the bill without that amendment or with that amendment attached to it. How do you know that? Why right? not try? Why not try? It's like, it's like you know what? The Patriots are a much better team. I'm not going to show up for the Super Bowl. You yeah. know, the same argument could have been made. Well, never send this crappy omnibus bill that grows government by trillions of dollars to Trump's desk because he'll never sign it. And then he signs it, right? You never know. You put the force on these people. This is what's failing Minnesota, guys, is a Republican yep. senator saying that. Show wasn't up it, to the Super Bowl. Do something. Wasn't we America playing. founded by a really audacious document that was sent to a leader that wasn't going to accept it? And then we made him accept it, and now we're a country. I mean, that's the spirit right. of America. That's what these people purport to embody, and they're not even willing to try. Yeah, they're so scared of losing the game, they don't even play. And that's the problem with Minnesota Republicans. They're so weak and feckless. They just refuse to step on the field. They just stand on the sideline and watch the game take place. It's, it's pathetic. And guess what? If we end up failing in the end, the people will love and adore you for the fight. It's so damn obvious to us. Yes. Now, I don't, lo- don't want to lose this thing because I, I've – Actually, at this point, it's not just about Samantha. We've been like, we felt kind of like we're supporting Samantha and somewhere down the road, it's going to affect, you know, us and passports. At this point, it's going to affect all of us. Biden literally is using the Department of Labor to force people with employers, employees of over 100. That's a lot of people here, right? So this is affecting all of us. What are you guys fighting for? It's time you guys start fighting in, in the uh, legislature. 
Yeah, it's already gone past healthcare. We said that right out the gate, like right when we started this group, you know, it's not going to stop at healthcare. Um, but it has already gone past it. We already saw state workers. Um, there's some unions that are talking about it for trade people. Um, it It's not going to stop there. It's not going to stop there because, you know, when you give somebody permission, then that seems to give everybody permission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fight is in people's living rooms. The voters feel it. And I guess the representatives are just totally blind to it. Do these, here's just a random question I thought of. Do these legislators work for employers with more than a uh, hundred employees? Are they subjected to this? Do they just not care? I mean, why isn't there sort of a personal connection to this fight for these people? Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know where everybody works, but I guarantee there's got to be a handful that work for larger employers or make feel the pinch on this. But I, I, I wonder how many of them really just don't care. Maybe they're in favor of mandatory vaccinations. I, I really, I don't know. And at this point, the fact that nobody else has been willing to sign this pledge leads me to believe they must be in support of the Walls Biden mandates. Well, I, I mean, I could shine some light on this thing. I mean, let's just air out the dirty laundry. The leader of the Republican House Caucus, Kurt Dowd, literally did paid commercials, paid advertisements saying, get your vaccination. So he said on the House floor, I wear this mask to protect you, which does not is not congruent with the science. So these guys don't believe in this stuff. Um, I think, you know, typical House re or typical Republican legislators in the state are so fearful of the, you know, the suburban vote. And they think this is too extreme a measure. And that's why they never get praise and love and adoration from the base because this is like the most important freedom issue of our time. And they're ignoring it because they're worried about they're worried about the Karen of the world that thinks everyone should be vaccinated, like with the fifth booster shot next next week. I mean, my God, stand for something. So I, I think Mort's right. I think there's a fa a, a large Back, uh, fraction of the legislature, the Republican caucus that doesn't believe in this. There might be stronger believers in the Democrat caucus, but you don't need them to be believers, folks. You need to tell them and demand what they do, because guess what? They work for you and they fear okay. one thing. It's election time. They either fear not getting reelected or they fear um, they won't be elected the next level. Like Gazelka and Benson have no shot at running to be governor right now. I don't know why they don't see this. If you guys can't stand on this, <laughs> you're not going to do well in the Republican primary or the endorsement, whatever. I mean, maybe, maybe both. Who knows what their plan is? They're not going to do well. They're, they're abandoning the people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that feel this way. There's 80 million people that are presently unvaccinated in America. In Minnesota, that's bound to be a very large share, a very large group of people. And the media, the left wing establishment, they want you to feel alone. They want you to feel isolated. But it's important to remember that you're not. Uh, there's, there's millions of people that think the same way you do. And if you guys band together and sign these pledges and get in touch with your legislators and do like Samantha did and make groups and networks, uh, you know, it is possible to let these people feel what you're believing. That's right. Absolutely. So one more time for the viewers, where can they find this pledge and where can they read the amendment? And then Samantha, where can they join your Facebook group? That's right. Um, so the they, yeah. they should go to actionforliberty.com, action the number for liberty.com. And you'll see right on the top of our page, there's a stop vaccine uh, mandate petition. So they can sign that petition. They'll get on their email. They'll find out what to do. They can read the news stories on the bottom. And then the pledge for legislators is up there. Yep. And like Mort said, hey, listen, if somebody doesn't want to sign this thing because they don't like the Action for Liberty logo on there, because it says to the citizens of Minnesota, it doesn't say to Action for Liberty's exec board. It doesn't say that. But we put the logo on there because we created the pledge. But right. if you need to take that off, copy and paste, do whatever, go ahead. All we mm -hmm. want is assurance that all 64 Republicans in the Minnesota House and all 34 Republicans in the state Senate are on board with this thing. And then I can go after Representative Julie Sandstead and Dave Lizagard in the Iron Range, these Democrats, these flip-flopping Democrats. We can go after and target Governor Walls. But until that happens, you're the problem. There's just no other way to look at it. You're the problem. And so go to actionforliberty.com. Absolutely. Uh, Representative Mortensen, where can they find a copy of this amendment? Uh, it's on your website, correct? Yeah, yeah, mortforhouse.com. That's where the amendment uh, draft is there. And we've gone through several iterations, um, a couple iterations with Samantha's help, and um, other legislators can look at it. I'm, I'm willing to take their feedback and, and uh, collaborate with them on that if uh, they're willing to go out there and check it out and, and give me their feedback. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Samantha, your Facebook group, what's it called? How can people get involved? So it's called Rally for V Choice. It was originally um, Medical Freedom Minnesota, but then we thought we would get shut down by Facebook by having that in our name. Um, and so it's actually a private group. And so you have to be you have to be invited by a friend of yours that's already in the group. But I do have a link that I can send individually. So I don't know why I'm doing this because my whole last three weeks has been responding to Facebook messages. But you can personally message me, um, or if you're my friend, you know. Just let me know and I will I will invite you. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it's good to see that there's at least hope. I mean, at the outset of this conversation, I was rather despairing, as I know many other people are. But, you know, it's good to see that people are fighting this on the state level. It's a very important fight. I encourage all of our viewers to check out Action for Liberty. Follow what Mortensen is doing. You know, stay involved in the Facebook groups. Keep fighting the fight because there is hope. And this special session and this amendment represent that hope right now. So we need to get behind this. Call your legislators. Sign the pledge. Uh, guys, thanks so much for joining us. Very important message, and uh, we'll keep encouraging our viewers to get involved. Thanks, thanks. Kyle. Thanks. Thanks so much.